All right, so in this one, we are gonna be creating a brand new virtual environment and install Django. Now, if you haven't done these things before, regardless of the version, definitely stop now and make sure you go back and do the setup process. Now, I absolutely want you to have a fresh virtual environment and a fresh Django install, not only just to get the practice of it, but also to make sure that we're all starting from the exact same spot. So, if you open up your terminal window, or if you're on Windows, your PowerShell or Command Prompt, but hopefully you're using PowerShell if you're on Windows. Linux and Mac users, just your terminal is fine. So if we type out Python V and Python 3-V, this is what I get. Now you might already have Python 3 in there. So if you see Python 3.6.5 or 3.6.6 .6 right here, you're in good shape. If you see this, then you're gonna to have to do an extra step. Okay, just keep that in mind. I'm gonna leave that open and I'm just gonna put it over to the side a little bit and break it down. So we can just keep that in mind while we're doing this. Okay, so I've got another terminal window open now. You absolutely don't have to do this, but I'm gonna leave it there just in case. So there's a few different ways on how we can create a virtual environment and install Django. I'm gonna show you the way that I'm gonna do it. So I'm initially gonna show you the final way, and if that part works for you, great, you can go to the next portion, which would be installing Django, which maybe we should just do all of that at, at first. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna do it. Now, I first of all wanna keep this virtual environment in one development area. So for me, when I open it up and I list everything out, this is what I see. Yours might be a little different, yours might be the same. You might see this dev folder. If you don't see it, just do make dirt dev, right? So in my case, I already have it there, so I get this error. I'm gonna just CD into my dev folder, right? This is where I keep all of my development projects. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory called try Django. We're gonna CD into that directory, and then we're gonna create our virtual ENV. Now before I create it, I'm just gonna hit virtual ENV and make sure I don't see any errors. I see that there's all sorts of options I can do. If I type out ABC, there is an error. So if you see an error, that means you need to install your virtual environment all over again. Okay, so I cleared everything out, but if I do PWD, I see exactly where I am. I'm inside of that folder. If I list everything out, there's nothing in there. Now, all I'm gonna do is virtual env p python3 enter. Now again, remember how I said if you had python-v and python3 was here, you can just omit this portion right here. Right? So if you see Python 3.6 right there, you can omit that portion and just leave it as virtual env period. We hit enter, that creates a virtual environment inside of this directory. So I can activate it with source bin slash activate, and then I can install Django. So pip install Django, and my version of Django is going to be 2.0.7. So Django equals equals 2.0.7. That should also be your version of Django. If you're sticking with me on this, use that version of Django. I honestly don't care if 2.0.8 was 2 .8 is out, use 2.0.7. We'll upgrade things later, and if you stick with me on this, you will absolutely upgrade with us, I promise. I absolutely promise. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter, and I'm gonna let that run. Now for those of you on Windows, your activate, you might remember, is different. It's just slightly different. While that installs, I'm gonna just go ahead and break it down a little bit. I'm gonna open up another terminal window and simulate reactivating this virtual environment. So I'm gonna list everything out, I CD into dev, and then I CD into try Django. I'm back into that virtual environment so I can do source bin slash activate in a Mac environment and a Windows environment, of course, it's script slash activate. And then you can also run deactivate, okay? So deactivate just ends the virtual environment. Cool. So what is the purpose of having a virtual environment if you don't already know? Well, it's, it's as simple as doing pip freeze. You see all this stuff. I see Django 1.10.4. If I activate it, source bend activate and do pip freeze, all I see is Django 2.0.7 and PYTZ. That's it. So it keeps these requirements separate. And when it comes to Python and its projects like Django, you wanna absolutely make sure that that is done. Okay, so we have everything installed 
Um, if, if this part was done, you're ready to go, you can move on to the next one. If you had some issues or you wanna see other ways of starting a virtual environment, stick with me. So notice that obviously we had all this stuff installed, all that's working. So going forward, just, just watch, just for illustration purposes, um, you know, I, I'm assuming that up to this point, if you have it working, then you're done. Um, if you don't have it working, watch this next part, rewind, and then install the things you need to install because I'm gonna go pretty fast, but still explain what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna close out all of my terminal windows and act like I'm starting from zero. Okay, so I, I jump into my terminal window. I go into, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new dev folder called dev2. I'm gonna CD into dev2 and list everything out. Nothing's in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you three different ways on creating a virtual environment. The first one is just type out virtual env and then the name that you wanna give it, so venv. That is a way to do it. Now this is irregardless of the Python version. It's gonna go off of whatever the system's default version is. So I type that out. In my case, it's version 2.7, but that is a way to start a virtual environment. Now, if I want to start it based off of a specific version of Python, I would do virtual env, venv, dash p, Python 3, oh, so let's call this venv2. This gives me a version of Python, and it's Python 3. Um, so that assumes that if I type out Python 3, it actually gives me a Python 3. But if you type out Python 3 and that doesn't work, this won't work. So what happens then? Well, I can just do which Python 3, or in other words, find the location where Python 3 is installed, right? So which Python 3 will not work if Python 3 doesn't work, right? Um, so every once in a while you install Python in your system and it's just installed somewhere else and this command itself doesn't work. But wherever that is actually installed on any system and you do something like this, you actually paste in the path to that and hit enter, that should actually open up Python 3 for you. Um, so then that means that the final way to actually start a virtual environment is virtual env, venv 3 dash p, and then the path to that Python 3, I hit enter, and then we'll actually start that virtual environment as well. Now, one other thing I will mention is we can also just make the directory that we wanna call it. So I wanna make a virtual environment in a brand new directory. This is it. I go ahead and hit enter. I CD into it. And then I can do virtual env and then period instead of the name and then whatever version of Python I may want, right? So the order of these things doesn't matter that much um, how I'm running those commands in comparison to what I was doing before. But that's a few different ways on how you can create a virtual environment. Now, in my case, I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of that dev2 folder. I, I, I really don't need it, but it was all about illustration purposes for getting all of this stuff going. Okay, so uh, I'll CD back into my original project and just go ahead and leave it at that. Now, if any of this was confusing and you're lost, rewatch the video and do this multiple times because having a basic understanding of starting a new project, installing it, you're gonna probably do this fairly often. If you're only here to learn some of the basics of Django and you don't plan on making very many projects with, with Django, you maybe won't need to do it this way. Um, now, one more note I will say is Perhaps you're like, hey, I don't care about a virtual environment. Um, I don't care about doing all these things. Well, do that at your own risk, right? So you're, you're gonna run into issues if you don't use a virtual environment. And yes, I am not using Conda. Anaconda is a, um, a package that's more for like data science related things. Django can use a lot of those same packages. In my experience, Anaconda and Django don't work that well. But realistically, if you're using Anaconda, um, you're probably already familiar with that system and you're probably not gonna use virtual environments. However, I will say for this entire series, I would recommend that you use a virtual environment just to get used to it, just to get used to how web developers often use um, the development environment for Django. All right, so that's a lot of setup stuff, right? I can say that we won't ever do setup things again with Django, but for now, that's it. Um, thanks so much for watching and the next one we'll actually get started with Django. Thanks so much.